In this lesson, I will be going over the properties of exponents, which will be a great refresher if you're having trouble with that. And it's also a good lead in into logarithmic functions or logarithmic properties. If we think back to or state the definition of an exponent, an exponent indicates the number of times that a base is being multiplied. So exponents are associated with multiplication. For example, x to the fourth, the base is x. x is being multiplied four times. So we're going to use that expansion to help us explore some exponential properties. In the first example, I have 3 to the third times 3 to the fourth. They have the same base. So I can collapse these together using a specific rule, and we're going to find out what that is. 3 to the third is 3 times 3 times 3. And 3 to the fourth is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And if we collapse that back, we get 3 to the seventh because it's being multiplied seven times. Now, if I look back at my original exponents, 3 plus 4 is 7. So when we have the same base and we're multiplying, we can actually add exponents. So multiplication means add. In the next example, we have division. You might be able to guess what division might yield. Let's take a look at it. X to the fifth, three, four, five, over X to the third. We have a common factor in the numerator and denominator, so those are gonna to divide to one. And we're left with X squared. Five minus three is two. So division translates to subtraction. I kind of like to think of the division sign as a minus sign. It's not at all, but it's a good memory device. Five minus three is two. So division is subtraction. Next one, I like to call it power to a power because we have an exponent raised to another exponent. This means x to the fourth, two, three, four, written three times, multiplied three times. Two, three, four, for a grand total of x to the 12th. X is being multiplied 12 times. Power to a power means multiply. So a to the m raised to the n means we multiply the exponents. Not too bad, right? The last one is really cool. Actually, I don't think it's the last one. The second to last one is really cool. We have x to the zero. x to the zero is not zero. Let's say for the sake of this lesson, we don't know what it equals. If I multiply it by something that I do know, then I can simplify this piece using my properties. I have the same base being multiplied, so that means I'm actually adding their exponents, and zero plus one is one. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that by this other side. And I have this expression, not expression, equation. If I divide both sides by x to the first to isolate x to the zero, then I end up with x to the zero equals x to the first over x to the first. Using my properties, I can subtract. I'm sorry, I don't need to subtract because then I would end up here. What I'm wanting to do is reduce this. X to the first would just be a number over X to the first would just be a number and it would divide to one. So all of that means that X to the zero is one. I wanna show you a simpler proof. I wanted to go through this because it was in the notes, but let me show you a simpler proof. If I had just started with one and I rewrote that with X's, x to the first over x to the first. We know that reduces, that simplifies to one. Then I use my properties of exponents, one minus one, and that yields x to the zero. Therefore, x to the zero equals one. So that's all that means, that's all it is. And coincidentally, not coincidentally, but mathematically, anything to the zero power is one. 
If you do three to the zero power, that's one. If you do pi to the zero power, that's one. Anything to the zero power is one. So that's pretty cool. I always think that's fun, which we're gonna use in the next example, last example. We have a variable term in the denominator. And we're going into basically, when you have a fraction, it translates into something in particular. I don't wanna spoil it for you. I can rewrite one, I just found, I know that one is x to the zero. And I'm gonna leave x to the fourth. And then I can use my properties to subtract and then simplify to get negative four. So when you have a variable in the denominator with an exponent, that's the same as that x, that variable to the negative exponent. And basically what I was trying not to spoil earlier is that if you have a negative exponent, that indicates that it is a fraction. So a negative exponent does not indicate a negative number, it indicates a fraction. And I'll show you why in a second. 